Hi Music Freaks, it's Mathieu here for another Bitweek tutorial, but today it's gonna be a Bitweek and Altria Spark tutorial. Uh, we're gonna check how to work with uh, the Altria Spark drum machine, a hybrid drum machine, uh, as a plugin into Bitweek. Um, so, uh, some of you might have the Altria Spark LE, which is a smaller drum machine. I have the, the the first spark like this one but it's the same the software i'm using is spark 2 so that's the, the last one anyway it's just that the control and and uh, the interface looks a bit different but basically it's the same principle so um first you have to load spark as a plugin you have uh, different modes you can use uh, if you use the tempo mode, then Spark is only reading the tempo from the host, from Bitwig. If you have the host button on, then it's going to listen to the play and stop message or transport messages. So uh, right now I have just tempo. And if I press play, uh, then it's it's not starting the, the Spark drum machine. So this way I could use it as just as a sound generator uh, and not as a, not use the sequencer of it. So if you want to do this, it means that uh, you want you can you can have MIDI clips sending the notes to the spark and uh, yeah, and use it just as a drum module basically. But for this you need a second um, a second channel like an, an instrument track. Uh, just for the MIDI clips and then you go into the in the output of, of it and then you look for spark here and you have the, the plugin spark boom and then that's it means that you, you then send your notes into this plugin so now if I unmute the track and I press play it's playing from this clip just to prove you is playing from this clip, I'm gonna move this snare here, and then you see it comes from there. If you press play here at the same time, and it's layering the notes coming from uh, the internal sequencer from Spark and the notes uh, coming from the MIDI here, which could be interesting too. Uh, it's listening to channel one. I don't know if you can change the channel. Right. Um, if you say I want to send a note to this, uh, the track spark, it is also working. So it means that when you send the, the notes uh, to the track, basically the notes are coming here, going, you see them here. So that's it for playing Spark with the MIDI notes. If you want to play it, I, I will mute this track now, huh? so it's not confusing. The, I mean, even mute the mute the clip. Boom. Um, if you want to play with the sequencer, just to have it in sync with the rest of your project here, then you have to press host. Then every time you press play, then it's starting the the patterns you have. One, two, three, four. You can can change the patterns here oh I, I happen to have only one pattern on this uh, particular project here don't think I have some here okay here I have, here I have some so um, the weird thing is spark will not accept program changes to change patterns here if you really want to uh, have Bitweek sequencer changing the patterns here, uh, then you would have to command click on Mac and then you can assign a MIDI note to to change the pattern. So I would say like 36 or was some was a C is for part I would say for pattern one and command click on the other one. 37 would be C sharp for pattern two. And then you have to have some clips 
uh, double click here I will make one clip here and another there change the color so it's more clear the orange one I will write a C1 and doesn't have to be long and uh, a C sharp one in the in the other one make a loop so so you see it's changing you have three ways to work with it either you send the MIDI notes via another track and then you have to unclick the host thing or you play it uh, with the host function um, so with the transport and you change the, the patterns yourself live which is actually kind of a thing to do for live use it's it's the way I would use it or uh, you have it in sync and uh, and the patterns are triggered by uh, your bitweek sequencer that that would be if you want to record it basically you know if um, you could have it everything programmed and then um, and then when you render your track in real time then you would have to re render in real time I will show you how if you want to export audio you can say real time so then uh, it would play the song basically in real time and then all the all the the changes in the spark uh, would occur and then you would have your version um, bounced so these are the three ways uh, to use spark as a VST in uh, in Bitwig uh, what else oh yeah if you want to record the automations of what you're doing on the controller then you will have to set it up uh, with a generic script um, the one I'm using is the script from Thomas Helsle um, this is his, uh, his GitHub here. Uh, Thomas Hetzler is his username, and I'll put the link in the description anyway. So here, Tom's Bitwig script is in JavaScript, so it's from Bitwig one, but it's updated for Bitwig two. And uh, the one I'm using is the Tom's generic, but it looks like it has some from Akai, MPD. Yeah, check your stuff here. Uh, but the generic one is, is working really good for the Spark. And um, so you have to set it up here. Spark. And uh, you take your, I mean, I don't know about the Spark LE, how it's, uh, how it's working exactly, but from with the Spark 1 controller, it you have to take the public in. Don't mess with the private in and private out uh, because that's the, the 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 connection between the the VST and the and the hardware. Uh, you don't want to interfere with this. So take the public here. Uh, the setups are there. I didn't touch anything, I guess. But have a look. It's off. No, 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 no. Pretty much no for everything. And uh, yeah. So you record your so you record the automation on this track. And uh, let's try it. I will use this, like pitch, but this guy here, pitch on the bass drum and see if it's working. Uh, you have to press uh, this guy and let's get it going. You see it's, it's working. Then the attack of the, of the, of the hi-hat at the same time so and if you want to listen to them then yeah of course you have to press on the the green button here and it's there so you have your automations uh, uh, you can automate your spark and yeah tailor like make some fine tuning uh, and then record the results just like you would do if you record the automations uh, directly in there. So uh, yeah, that's it. I don't think I forgot anything uh, crazy there. That's uh, oh, I did forget something really crazy. Um, 
as you maybe know, uh, Spark is also has some multi outs. So uh, in the mixer, you can set multi outputs. So you can, I mean, for every track, you can set, set a single output and you can have 16 outs. So all your pads uh, have an, an output. Um, and then you see this on the, you know, on the, on the sandbox thing here, on the spark, you have those two arrows here. And if you press on it, then uh, you see all the tracks. So you see all the tracks, you see the pad one, this is my bass drum. Then two is the snare and so on. Uh, this is pretty cool because then you can process with other plugins than the ones uh, uh, in Spark, which are hmm, uh, not the best ones, I would say. Um, but uh, the thing is, uh, if you want to use uh, uh, some send effects from Bitwig, then you will have to trick a bit. So let's say um, I will put two effects. One is going to be reverb and the other one is going to be delay. Let's take delay one enough. You notice that uh, as soon as you put them on the return tracks, they put themselves in the 100% uh, mix, which is pretty handy. And then let's go back to Spark. So we only have 16 outs and we have already, we have 16 pads. So you will have to use uh, some of them outputs uh, for uh, the return effects. I will remove the effects from the spark and then give 15 and 16 here. So it means that anytime you, you open a send in the spark, it's gonna go out to 1516. Where I mean, we already have something on 1516, but then you would sacrifice two pads and not use them, like mute them here. Um, so we have 14 out plus two out for our effects. We're not using the master, we don't need those guys here. Could save some processor. So uh, now let's say I open the send on the kick and then look down, scroll down here. And this is here, you see, this is our return one. So this is the one called, uh, this is the stereo uh, 27, like with uh, mono 29 and, and 30. So if this is our send one, you would have to put an audio receiver here. Not an amp. And you go for spark, spark chains, and you take the 27, uh, do you, want, you want to take the pre or the post? I take the post and you mix it like something about under 50%. And now our kick is going, let's, let's go check the spark again. So if I turn the aux down, no reverb. If I turn it up, reverb. If I do this on the snare, no reverb, reverb. So that's how you use the the um, the Bitwig uh, send and return uh, with the Spark. Um, then let's do it the same for the delay audio receiver. Uh, for the delay, it's gonna be. Let's check again. Go for the Spark, and uh, if I open the aux two. It's coming to 29 here. 
then in the audio receiver here we say 29 spark chains 29 we used post it was good less than 50 percent and then uh we'll do it on the no you want i want you to see it too so i open the send to on the kick and then we have it we have the delay so we are channeling the the send this i mean the, the, the signal goes out from the send in parallel goes to the return which is empty so it's going through and then it goes out to output 15 which is a stereo output uh, which is actually uh, 27 in the, in the way it's displayed here in the spark and so we to root it you we have to say to put our audio receiver between uh, uh, before the reverb uh, the bad thing is that the the track took the name of the first device on it so you yeah, we have to change the name and put reverb back but that's not too bad right delay and that's it that's why how you use uh, your spark uh, with the uh, bitwig the multi out is going to work for anything that that has multi out it works uh, with contact it works with um, uh, addictive drums uh, anything that has multi out capability you can uh, be able to uh, to display them with this so that's it hope you liked it and uh, don't forget to subscribe and give me a, a thumbs up and uh, yeah check the github uh, uh, from thomas hesler and check my github too for my presets uh, look it's here matthew p uh, you go for between presets and then uh, i update uh, like every time I have new preset coming up, uh, I will just put them in my folder and commit it. So if you follow me there, you will get all the updates and uh, yeah, we can share the presets and uh, yeah, let's make a big between community. So have a nice one and see you for the next video. Ciao.